This video is sponsored by Paradox Interactive. So, they kept the best for last. Wait, no, uh, Zlevik's video was actually posted five days ago. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Jokes aside, today I have the pleasure of showing you guys the new EU4 DLC, Domination. And the nation I'll be showing today is England. A couple days after the release of this YouTube video, the new EU4 DLC, Europa Universalis 4 Domination, will be released, which focuses on the major powers of EU4. And in this video, as I just said, we're going to be focusing on England, who actually got two new mission trees. Yeah, that's right. Two new mission trees that you can choose from. So right away, we can actually see some changes. We have a brand new flag. <coughs> More importantly, a new mission tree. And this is actually not the mission tree that we will be playing with today. The mission tree you see right here is actually the mission tree of Great Britain, or if you're trying to form Great Britain. And there are some cool aspects to this mission tree, like, for example, the East India Trade Company and some other stuff. So where is this second mission tree? Well, it completely changes based off of this first mission, the Hundred Years War. And I'm really excited to show you what this mission tree entails. We will get the option to push for our Angevin claims and try to force the Union over France. And it doesn't end there. The missions completely focused on dominating continental Europe. In this video, we're going to go in depth of that new mission tree that you get when you go down the path of the Angevin claims. Going down the Angevin kingdom path means that we can no longer form Great Britain. Then you might be asking, what can you form? Well, we get a brand new formable called the Angevin Kingdom, which has its own unique ideas and will allow us to integrate France for zero diplomatic power. But in order to do that, we have to win the Hundred Years War first. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that with zero allies. One tip before we begin, you can choose to restart if Burgundy decides to make you their rival, as you can get the Burgundian inheritance as England if you don't have them as your rival and you royal marry them. However, I won't be doing that in this run. First, we got to move our troops over. Oh yeah, there's also some new estate privileges. Pretty cool. There's like one that gives reform progress growth. There's rolling decision ones where you get a decision every 15 years to trade something for something or, you know, maybe loyalty for um, a general or in this case, loyalty, prestige and legitimacy for papal influence, which we, we took and we are going to use throughout the campaign. Gotta take the Borger loans here. Oi, our first parliament debate is gonna be for the stab and manpower recovery speed, monthly war exhaustion. Those are all things that are pretty nice for us right off the bat, especially considering we have no manpower compared to our max manpower. Order! Order! We need plus one stability and monthly war exhaustion and manpower recovery speed. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. give me some duckies. And uh, of course, I'm going to be showing you guys how to win the Hundred Years War with no allies. Uh, but we still are going to get some allies, preferably some strong allies, in order to protect us against the coalition after getting the Union on France. Um, day one, taking the Union on France, which is what we're trying to do, uh, is going to produce a lot of aggressive expansion and a lot of the minions in the HRE are going to join coalition against us. So if we get some strong allies, we can avoid that entirely. Both Castile and Austria in this case want to be my ally. So I'm just going to ally both of them just for that purpose. Now we wait for the Hundred Year War event, the surrender of Maine. Now we wait. Now we really wait. Oh, we wait. Yeah, so um, I got some weird RNG here. Actually, the War of the Roses is going to fire first, which is rare. Usually the Hundred Year War continuation fires first, but uh, it is what it is. We're going to just keep playing with it. Um, actually, it's better RNG the longer it is, okay? And I'll tell you why. When you get the War of the Roses, you can actually deal with it pretty quickly. If you get b bad RNG, you know, you're going to have to kill a couple battles, but two, three battles, boom, finish occupations, you get it done with, and you will get a mission that actually gives you a uh, bonus against aggressive expansion, which is great since we're going to be pewing the entirety of France. It isn't needed though. If you get the allies and you improve the relations, you shouldn't get a coalition. But hey, good RNG for us, let's go with it. Here it is, War of the Roses. Not the best choices, whatever, we'll pick the best one. First battle already completed, we're gonna just use our boats to get the second battle. Second battle done, but we're still in the War of the Roses because the Pretender hasn't died, so we're just gonna have to wait for one more rebel stack to spawn. 
or even some some cases two three it really depends on your rng there it is the guy spawned over here we're just gonna kill him pretender died in that battle and that's it it's done you will then get an event to put a tutor on the throne for stability which we will take so we are now sitting at a nice one stability if he's a bad rng just you can just disinherit him you can just disinherit him day one it doesn't matter you can just use your prestige which is what i do right here just get rid of him throw him down the stairs oh. and here's the mission i'm talking about aggressive expansion and nobility loyalty equilibrium and another stability so now we're at plus two stab that being said we're now going to get our army in position to for the continuation of the hundred years war and now we go back to waiting now, it's 1449 for me, and the War of the Ro uh, the Continuation of the Hundred Years' War has uh, fired. We're going to do, we will not surrender an inch of territory to the French, which will start an offensive war against the French, and Maine will be occupied. Okay, right in the beginning of the war, what we're going to do is we're going to spawn uh, two mercs. You, in the beginning, uh, you can use your initial army. You don't need to do two mercs, but since I did lose um, quite a bit of men, in the hundred year uh in the war of the roses i'm going to do two stacks the biggest one and the smallest uh free company and uh immediately go to chartez um to start sieging this province of course some of them will go for gastony some players like to just delete this fort because it just gives free war score to france me personally i like keeping it because it preoccupies some of the southern armies while we occupy chartez this fort right here is basically the biggest blocker for us to make moves okay because we're going to need to we're going to need um by the way i, I want to snipe this navy we're going to need to stack wipe the minions the little guys in order to win this war we need to stack wipe. as you can see right now they have double the numbers and france is actually allied to genoa and since this is a defensive war genoa will come help that's 13k troops because the hundred year war continuation has fired it allows us to click this mission which gives us two options the first option is to leave the continent, focus on your colonial empire, go to India, which is also, it's a good path, it's pretty cool. It gives you the option to make the East India Company, as well as the ability to choose trade goods for colonies. Pretty cool. However, in this video, by the way, if you want me to do a Great Britain uh, video, let me know down below in the comments. But in this video, we're going to be doing, we cannot get rid of our angevin claim we cannot stop that we are going for europe domination of europe we want the european continent but anyways yes so that's going to completely change our mission tree once we click it throughout this video we will be going through this mission tree in detail and doing most of it however uh for now we need to focus on the hundred year war because we do need the tech four so actually you know what i'm not going to even roll it i'm just going to go with what i got getting tech four is more important than getting a general uh, because if you if France gets tech four before you do, it's very unlikely you'll win any battle. By the way, speaking of spa stack wipes, this should be just a really quick whoop. Oh, it isn't a quick boop. Go, go, go. Um, and I actually, if you noticed, I actually got access to Burgundy. You might be saying, why would you do that? Well, it makes the AI actually go for Calais which gives us more time to get Chartez. Like I said, this fort is so important. It opens up all of Northern France and gives us way more mo mobility when trying to get the stack wipes we need. And you can actually see, we can call to arms both Castile. Uh, well, this guy not, but uh, you know, I could have curried favors with Austria. Castile's just down to do it either way. Oh, he wants promise of land. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I want to show you guys that you can win this war without any help. Chartez has fallen, but both Calais and Laborde are both on the verge of falling. However, that's fine if they do fall. Right now, we need to be looking for battles and stack wipe opportunities. Because we didn't buy that general, by the way, we were able to get tech 4 on time. Um, a little bit faster than France is going to here. Jeez, that's 71,000 all in one tile. We don't want him to engage us on Paris. We do this, probably won't. We are losing a lot of money, but remember that as England, your income does scale pretty hard because due to the English channel. So it's not really a big concern. We could take like 2k debt here and still be fine. Boom, that's Paris down. Now let's try to look for some opportunities. Forget Calais. Not going to go down in time. That is fine. What we do need to do here real quick is I need to... I did spawn a negative nobles event. We're just going to go deal with those just really quickly. So... 
just while our army is recovering here a bit. So this run, not the best RNG, still fine. Still fine. Everything here is fine. I'm going to roll another general. Okay, one siege. Got two one sieges. That's going to be the last general I roll. Here's what we want. This is perfect. We can go all the way around before we get into Paris. We hope he doesn't get the 14%. He does have a five siege, so he did. Oh, what the? Is that a bird? Again, we're going to try to go for the stack wipes. This one's a big one. There we go. Make sure you cons consolidate before the battles. Sure. You want to make sure he doesn't get Paris, because sieging that down would be very annoying. We're now going against the 5 shock, 5 siege, amazing general that he has. This is a pretty big battle here, something that you'd want to kind of avoid. This should be a stack wipe on Genoa, which is actually quite huge. Yep. And you can see the numbers, we now have the troop advantage. Once again, France AI is going to force us to take a big battle. We should win this battle even though we're outnumbered just because the other people that aren't France don't have the tech. So that means that they're lower morale than us. And we do have higher discipline. Please win, please win, please win, please win, please win, please win. Very close battle. We're gonna come down to the rolls. We won. Also, I uh, canceled access with Burgundy. Now someone else can get access to Burgundy, but that basically lets this stack siege. What I'm going to also do is put this over here so to get better siege tick. I should have actually done that earlier. You could also build spy network on France, but like the thing is if you do that, you won't be improving relations with people and you have more likelihood of getting coalition. Keep in mind right after this war, we're going to go up north and we're going to do wars against Scotland and Ireland. And with the siege of Calais done, we now have enough war score to peace out France for a union on his throne. This now ends the Hundred Year War and gives us our next mission. So uh, there is actually a mission or decision rather that we can click that can start a parliament immediately, the French English Reconciliation Act. However, since we had a late uh, 100 years war, we're not going to click that one immediately. We're actually gonna wait until our current parliament debate or current bar parliament bonuses go away. And we're actually going to click for uh, curtailing the French nobility since it gives us a better bonus and we have to wait for that one. And additionally, once we click that bonus, we can click the decision that we have. Okay, and right away we're going to go and we are going to uh, subjugate uh, Scotland. Something interesting about EU4 is that vassals, even if they're disloyal, help you navally. They don't help you militarily, but they do help you navally. Something that I always found a little funny. All right, and uh, as we continue this war, in this case, Brittany was allied uh, to um, Scotland. Okay, so there is something that I mentioned earlier uh, about the force of act of union debate. This is the debate in Parliament to basically decide to integrate France for free and change from being England to being the Angevin Kingdom. There are requirements, as I was talking about earlier. The requirements are that France stays below 25 cities, okay? So that means that France can't integrate uh, more than two vassals. If he does, we're going to have to declare war on someone and then basically give them some of French's land. Right now, he's at 20, so that's not a problem. That's not something we have to do right now. Uh, but the other is that we personally, as France, we, I mean, as England, we need to directly control 25 provinces in the French region. That means that we're going to have to take land from Burgundy, we're going to have to take land from Brittany, and we're going to have to take land from Provence, well, in this case, from the Pope. Champion of Joust event happened. I'll take that 100. Hooray! Christian General. This early game as England really, really, really is about Diplomat Micro. In order to expand fast while also maintaining uh, no coalition, we're going to have to keep improving relations with all of these HRE miners. And now we can uh, peace out Mr. Scotland. Funnily enough, I got actually declared war on by Burgundy, but Burgundy declared war on France? It's a defensive war though. Since he declared war on France, it didn't call any other people that were in my small coalition that I just formed. However, I can't call in my allies until I peace out the Irish nations as they would get called into multiple wars. And this is actually quite a good situation because it's going to give us the opportunity to unsiege and help France out, which will give us the relations we need to make him even more loyal and to curtail the French nobility. Okay, for ideas, we're going to go diplomatic first. 
quite important that we do that. As a matter of fact, we're going to complete Diplomatic before we even take a Dip Tech. Just because of all the bonuses you get for Dip Tech costs from taking Diplomatic Ideas. Plus Diplomatic Tech, plus Behind in Time. Um, and additionally, because we are helping France, he now has much higher relations with us. And he is almost, almost, almost at minus 30. Yes, we can do curtail... Curtail French nobility. I'm gonna spawn some pretenders. And then in this war against Burgundy, we don't have claims, plus we still have a lot of aggressive expansion. What we are going to do is we're going to help out the Emperor here. He's actually not getting that much Imperial Authority due to having a lot of lands in the Empire not controlled by him. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a peace deal where Burgundy releases subjects, Holland and Brabant. And because we passed the act, we are able to shatter the French nobility, which gave us one point to our uh, one admin point and one diplo point to our current ruler. And now the coalition is breaking, getting that yearly plus 60 yearly tax is actually quite helpful. And there we go. And now we're making a positive balance so we can start paying off our debts. And as soon as our truces are over, we are continuing our wars. We are continuing the war path. Remember, we need 25 provinces in the French region. Okay, and then we have now passed the next parliament, which we don't have to wait for. You can just immediately do, which gives you uh, for the next 10 years advisor as well as prestige, as well as the extra prestige becomes monarch points. That bonus that we got from curtailing the French nobility, we keep it and lasts 10 years. So we still have it for another five years. Quite nice having this French attack dog just doing a lot of our wars for us. He's all even up here. We've finished consolidating the Irish region. Quickly getting that. Not bad. Fully annex this. The thing is though, another thing that I have to mention is that since we didn't go the British path, we went the Angevin Kingdom path, we do not automatically integrate Scotland, right? So if you form Great Britain, you automatically integrate Scotland. If you go the Angevin Kingdom path, you automatically integrate France. So for that reason, we're going to want to integrate Scotland and also integrate uh, Ulster at some point uh, just so we can get more diplomatic relations slots. I think that once we complete diplomatic ideas and catch up in Diplotech though, we're going to go over our diplomatic relations slots and try to become the Emperor. And we're back to improving relations with electors, with our own subjects and building claims on Brittany and on Burgundy. And now we can do uh, allow claimering borders which we'll do and that will allow us to go like this just to make sure we do need to go like this then and we're just making claims on burgundy we've also made claims on all of Brittany. all of our vassals are loyal and our subjects are loyal and we are now continuing to increase relations with the electors right now bohemia He's voting for himself because Bohemia does that sometimes. But we're getting the electors slowly, slowly on our side. Right now, we are completing diplomatic ideas. I am using this trade advisor because he's discounted. But once he dies, we're going to do dip rep advisor. And we're going to put him to level 3. We then also are unifying the Isles. Normally, this mission, it would give admin. And then it will also give us an event that lets us buy these two islands from Norway. But that event already happened for Scotland and he got those two so we get dip points instead and then we can do unify the isle. And we actually don't need to wait until uh, our king dies. We fired the ink is thicker than the blood event which allows us to get a heir from one of our royal marriages. Which in this case we're going to pick from the Trastamara of Castile. Which even though he's not that good of a ruler, I, I, it hurts me that he's not that great. He is of the De Trastamara dynasty. Which means that when our king dies, we will have the same dynasty as Castile. Giving us the opportunity to do a personal union on him once he doesn't have an heir. You can replicate this exact thing in your run by simply royal marrying who you want to get on your throne. And just ha keep disinheriting your heirs over and over again. For our reforms, we ended up taking representatives of the crown for the diplomatic relations. 
so we can ally, ally another elector. This gives us a spy network construction, cost to fabricate claims, and an extra diplomat for 10 years, which is amazing because we are manually making our claims onto Burgundy, so that's very helpful. For our next parliament debate, we want to do restore public reputation, which gives us one dip rep. The thing is, in order to get that parliament debate, we need to have the annex subjects modifier. Um, it does also remove the annex subject modifier, so you lose also the minus dip rep. In addition to that, you get another one dip rep. So with that one dip rep, we should be right over the edge in order to get everyone enough to back us as emperor. Now we will just need the king to die, which he's still pretty young. So there's that. Okay. But we are going to become the emperor. That is our goal here. I was able to make five manual claims before this war. Anyways, we have to be careful not to get aggressive expansion since we are expanding in Europe. For my next idea group, I'm going to go with infrastructure ideas, mainly because it's a new idea group um, and I wanted to test it out. But also because with Diplomatic, you get Dip Rep plus one. There's a lot of idea groups that we could go here in combination with Diplomatic Ideas to get Diplomatic Reputation. But we decided to go with Infrastructure Ideas since it's the new idea group. Giving us state maintenance, global prosperity, construction costs, expand infrastructure cost modifier, movement speed, center of trade upgrade cost, state governing cost, fort maintenance, construction time, expand administration cost, and minus 10 dev cost. Okay, and that's the Burgundy War done. We're not going to take that much in this war, just this. With some more reps, this should give us some time to break the AE a little bit. It's a little difficult expanding while also having uh, the HRE right at your doorstep. And that is Brittany integrated. Name already looking pretty nice here. And that will give us our next mission. For the Burgundy one, we still need to conquer this part of Burgundy. We'll have to do that in the next war against him. As for becoming the Emperor of the HRE, right now it's slowed down again because we are overextended from our last two wars. But once that's over and we finish the, the infrastructure ideas, we should be in a position to become the Emperor. Anyways, the current ruler of the HRE is very young, so it's very unlikely that he will die anytime soon. Until then, we gotta keep making claims on Burgundy. I think I just found an infrastructure idea pulse event, which is pretty good. A hundred of all points for some no, cash. No, 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 Even though right now I am losing money, uh, it's a lot of it is because I do have high level advisors, which I am prioritizing right now. Oops, I just wasted mill points. <laughs> what a bad player I am. Um, how much did I lose? All right, guys. So apparently I'm very noob. Uh, you can just end the video right here. There's nothing else I have to say. Thank you for watching. Now I'm just trying everything I can to get as many relations possible with the electors. Please vote for England. England number one empire. We want to actually become the emperor before... I think we want to become the emperor before we form the Angevin kingdom. Because um, if we become the emperor, we can move our capital to border the empire. Then... Uh, our uh, vassals uh, or our union and our vassals will likely join the empire if they have high relations and we're the emperor they'll join the empire giving us imperial authority then we, we we would join the empire which would give us like a huge amount of imperial authority so we could possibly pass just two reforms just like that i'm out here just offering mill access to all of these guys they don't even need it transfer trade power by the way this gives relations if you didn't know Right now we got two voting for us. We're sending guarantees to all of the guys in the empire. Claim guarantee. Oh yeah, we can also reduce opinion. We can make this guy reduce opinion of Austria. We need, what? Our opinion of Austria is at least 75. If only Austria was a valid rival for me. I wonder, is it because he doesn't have Renaissance? No, he has Renaissance. He's just not strong enough. I'm too strong to make Austria a rival. I have an idea. We can keep asking for mill access. Can we keep doing that? Only I had less than 75 relations with Austria. Ah. Oh, maybe I could send them. Manage attitude. Hostile. How do I? I have you as hostile. Why don't you hate me? The game does a minor amount of trolling on me.
All right, time for war with Burgundy again. Let's get these guys in the war with me. Might as well use their alliance for something. I honestly have a pretty small army for my size. I'll also increase that. Maybe if you do exactly what I did, you'd have better luck with uh, becoming the emperor. And that was a nice and quick, easy war. Okay, so we integrated Ulster here. You might be saying, why did you do that? Well, we're looking for a parliament debate that removes... Okay, well, uh, I can't find it. Uh, so what we do here is when you don't find a parliament debate you want, what you do is you wait until the next month tick. You close it, wait for the next month tick. Then you look at the debates again. Okay, we're looking for the one that gives us one dip rep. Yeah, there it is. And the next subjects will remove. There we go. That's what we want. Of course, right now, the Emperor has high Imperial authority. So all of these guys, once he passes a reform, see right here, they will vote for me. Oh, what a cursed timeline. Henry de Tastamara. I'm pretty sure Henry wasn't a Spanish dynasty, but you know, I'll, I'll take him. I'll take him. <laughs> five, five, five. five. I'll take it. I'll take it. Henry VIII in this timeline be like, See. Si. Oh, yes. We're, we have enough we have enough vo voting for us and there we go we are now the emperor of the hre okay now we need to do our imperial duties we need to uh we need to we'll start with burgundy we're gonna need to save admin to put our capital basically we can't join the hre because our capital isn't connected to the hre but if we put our capital in calais i believe yeah our capital can be connected to the hre so um, and it will stay in the English Channel, so we don't have to spend dip to uh, move it again to put it back in the English Channel. And that way we can join the HRE, and that will probably give enough to pass another reform. What we can do right now is one of the Crown of Ireland Act, which starts to debate. Every province in Ireland gains one base production. Gonna do that one, which is going to instantly put us into a debate without being on cooldown. And you got to just pass these. Of course, these get harder to pass the bigger we become. Make Lubeck release this province, and then okay. anything else that we can release that's good? No. Okay. Done. Let me save here just in case. Uh, move our capital here to Calais, which should allow us to join the HRE. But hopefully that causes... Oh! Yep, now these guys are also joining the Empire. Our king died. And that's another 10 Imperial Authority. Let's make this war quick so we can pass our next reform. Our 555 five, five, Henry. Welcome. We're right now swarming the Ottomans. But we're still losing. How did we lose that battle? I do not know. I guess Reddit was right. Ottomans 2 OP, guys. That's the only reason why I lost the battle. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, we win, we win, we win. Never mind, never mind. Good, good, good. Reddit was wrong. Reddit was wrong, guys. Ottomans are not OP. They need more buffs. Paradox, please. Buff them more. I'm winning a war against them. As a player against a normal AI difficulty. And now I'm looking at the new reform, Tier 5, the Military Doctrines. There's some pretty interesting in here. Nothing super overpowered or anything. M M Royal Marines. Hmm, maybe... I'm thinking I like the military engineering, artillery barrage cost. I do barrage a lot. You could call me Barrage Obama. Okay, I do admit that was my worst joke yet. Running up that hill, running up that Ottomans. Battle for Gallipoli is going to happen a little uh, early in this timeline. All right, Ottomans, they got the beat down. I can't reform though, because I am overextended. And I'm also not Germanic. That's a bit racist, HRE princes. You don't want the reforms because I'm not Germanic? <sighs> Guys, we need to go on Twitter. We need to cancel all the HRE princes right now. There we go. A reform passed. We just need this one. We can start going down this path. Uh, uh, it's, we're still pretty far away, chat. But now that we're free, we can now declare war. On Poland. Imperial ban. Ban him now. Meep, meep, meep. Ooh, and Spain formed. How old is this guy? How old are you? 64? Oh. We need to dissolve this alliance. 
Sorry, Spain. For our next idea, we're going to go Core Ideas, simply because it has 5% Imperial Growth Modifier. That's honestly not that much at all, but I don't care. Sadly, if we were Great Britain, we could form Great Britain, right? But in this case, we need to complete this mission before we can form the uh, Angevin uh, Kingdom. But in order to do that, we need to do one war against uh, Burgundy, which is a truce for six years. We need to do a war against Savoy, which we can do that next. And we need to do a war against the Papal States. Once we do those wars, though, we can integrate France for free. Well, not really for free. We have to conquer all of this land, but still. All right, next war. We need to attack Savoy. I think I have claims. Yeah, I do. I have claims for the French stuff. To attack the Pope, too, unfortunately gonna hate me but i need that stuff but mr pope uh, so i can form my formable you'll understand it's for the youtube video don't take it personal man i i think uh i think this campaign is doing something funny to my brain time to claim the spanish throne oh boy throne has been claimed the spanish throne has been claimed here we go still have a truce with uh spain though we have to wait, I think I saw them, one more year and we can deck, actually less than one year. Oh man, please don't get an heir on your throne. Spain, don't get an heir on your throne. Or we might have to go a little bird watching, if you know what I'm saying. I'm the biggest bird, I'm the biggest bird, I'm the biggest bird, I'm the biggest bird. And the reformation has begun. Bruce expired with Spain, you know what that means. Here we go. That was easy. I love money. Portugal, give me your money. And we are taking some debt here, but keep in mind that we have that mission that's basically... Yeah, these loans are 1% loans. These are 1% loans. Thank you, Reform National Bank Act and the Bank Charter Act. 1% loans, just straight up from here. This is burger loans. Oh my god, that's so strong. That is so, so strong. Of course, it's not forever. The modifiers are gonna go away. And this one is only until 28. One thing I forgot to mention is don't attack the Pope. Now he is controlled by the Pope. But don't attack the Pope while he is the Holy See. You're gonna get excommunicated. And if you get excommunicated, all of your all the people in the HRE are gonna hate you and they're not gonna elect you. Of course, it doesn't matter if you get to the point where... Uh, if you get to this reform, proclaim Erbakaisertum. Er Sorry for butchering that. I know someone in German is like, No! That's not how you say it! That is not how you say it! Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, You know, my American is coming out. The American side of me. Uh, But uh, unless you get to that reform. What I wanted to do, what I really wanted to do was to get that reform before Anglican... Because if you get to this reform, it doesn't matter what religion. You could turn Hindu for all matters, and it, you would still be the emperor of the HRE, because that's how it works. Once you reach this reform, it doesn't matter. The HRE is always inherited by the same country. Um, and I could do an Anglican empire. Of course, converting everyone in the HRE to Anglican would probably not be possible. Maybe if, they, if I got... Uh, oh, what are the Ottomans doing? I think I had a three siege. We're going to send them to Lorraine. And uh, delete. Actually, I'm going to keep this Merc stack just for now. Just to avoid coalition. You know, having the army. Um, it is going to make me lose money. But I'd just rather not have the coalition against AI right now. Um, you can see some of these guys are starting to get pissed off at me. Probably because I'm expanding so aggressively. Oh, and I just got excommunicated. Uh, birding time! Oh, man. I was that a bird? You can't really afford getting excommunicated. Uh, what I will do here is I'll take on his foreign debt. Improve by 200. Yeah, boom. We took on the Pope's debt. Now we won't get excommunicated, right? Right? We're not excommunicated, right? I birded in time. Yeah, I did. Okay, good. All right. The war against Lorraine is done. He does not want to peace out. Okay. Uh, is there anything else? Well, you will unconditionally surrender after, I think it's a year now. I believe that uh, the time for it is reduced. They, yeah, look, they unconditionally surrendered. It, how long has this war been going on? Two years? Hmm, pretty good. I like that change. I like that change. One thing to keep in mind, though, is if you're trying to separate peace other people, you better siege them first, because if you don't, you will end up getting called for peace um, and getting a lot of war exhaustion. 
uh, while you wait for them to get siege. So something to keep in mind in this patch of EU4. And there we go. Entire French regions controlled by me or my vassals. We can now do this, which unlocks the Act of Union Parliament issue. We're going to click this. We get the Summer Court in Anjou. All right, we'll click those ones in a second. But first, we're going to do Force Acts of Union Debate. Now, this puts us immediately into Parliament Debate. We're going to have to bribe some MPs here. It's at 0% for some reason. Placate the burgers, military support, sure. I would normally not do that one, but um, if I was like in an MP game. But I, I don't think anyone would ever pick Angevin Empire and MP. Um, and look at that. We immediately integrate France. I think we also are going to integrate his vassals too. Okay, for some reason Orleans did not get integrated, but all the other guys did. Not sure why that happened. And now we're going to get new ideas and traditions. Let's take a look at them, guys. 20% national manpower, 30 improved relation, 20 core cost reduction. I really like that. 10, uh, 15 tax, plus one number of possible parliament issues, five discipline, chance of new air, years for personal union integration. So diplomatic infrastructure ideas are actually really good on this nation. I'm not sure about core ideas, but 5% imperial reform, guys. Uh, 10 infantry combat ability. Okay. 15 governing capacity, pretty nice. One yearly legitimacy and five years of separatism. So it seems more of like a conquest idea set, more than like a MP or battle type uh, idea set or a colonial idea set. There's nothing for col col colonizing here, which makes sense. And oh, that flag looks familiar. And then which does unlock this mission, um, which since we deformed the Angevin Empire, we get random provinces throughout getting that, uh, getting 20 dev. Then we can do the Kingdoms of Spain Act, which will unlock, uh, I believe it's a decision. Okay, well, we already have you under personal union. I guess they did not expect us to have a personal union. But now we also have claims on Portugal, which we can use to get this mission. So it's not like we're locked out until we integrate Spain. Uh, that being said, we can actually integrate Spain in 30 years because we have two minus 10 modifiers. Pretty nice. Um, and then the next, we do get a bunch of claims on North Italy. And then um, we do also, uh, we have to actually just wait, give it a second. I think we have to wait the month tick. Yeah, because they're, they're bugged out. They think I'm England and Angevin Empire. So just give it a second. Let's do the month tick. Okay, I didn't have to wait the month tick. It just auto fix. And then we can do the Holy Roman Struggle, which uh, gives us uh, Diplomatic Reputation 2 and Reason Select plus 30 for 20 years. Oh, that's really nice. If we own provinces instead, we get 200 admin and 5 aggressive expansion opinion towards... Everyone in the HRE would lose 5 aggressive expansion. Not 5%, just 5. So if you're 50, you'd go to 45, right? But we, went, we, we got elected, so we got that instead. Now, to continue on our mission tree, we need to uh, get 15 provinces in here. Uh, which gets us a claim on the Italy region. Um, and then also would probably get the active Italian crown, which would probably do the same thing as the last two ones, which requires us to, which would um, give us an option to release a personal, uh, a, a kingdom as a personal union. Not sure why you would do that in Spain if you have a PU, but you already had the PU, but in Italy's case, it could be really good because then you get reconquest cores. Now there is one mission that we can click. This one's actually quite interesting. We just need a British and a Francine advisor. So let's just look for a guy that's Francine. And there it is. Once you get that advisor of the British and Francine culture, you can click this and get British culture group gets converted into the Angola culture group. So let's hear this, how it looks like by default. You know, you have the British culture group and you have the English culture group. Now let's see it after clicking the mission. We are one, my French brothers. Ooh, and this also becomes one culture too. So we actually get another a culture group accepted. And there you go. They're all now part of the French culture group. French is now entirely accepted. Very, very cool. And surprisingly, we, we actually don't have a coalition. There's no coalition here, chat. We can do another mission here, expand the empire, uh, the army, sorry. I have a fort and one of the manpower increasing buildings gain the following effect 10 dev cost 100 garrison side 70 
five local fort maintenance till the end of the game. That's pretty nice. And then we also get another one. Every owned province with at least 20 Velmen in France, British Union gain the following effect for 25 years. You know, we could actually make this a little bit crazier. What we do is we go through here and then we make a bunch of provinces. Well, actually, we should turn on edict, development edict. We make a bunch of these provinces 20 dev. All right made a bunch of problems we have like 30 provinces that are 20 dev now we see on the dev map mode yeah look at that all of these provinces do 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 all now get this bonus amazing you could min max that further and save that until the, every province is 20 dev if you're really min maxing which is really cool i really like missions where you know you can really take them to extremes now, we haven't really been looking at it but the bottom side of the mission tree has this whole branch some of these are kind of familiar to the old british tree um we have the house divided which i'm trying to get the next time we'll just pick a nobles uh, uh diet um this one is for Delaware Bay. Okay, not that one. Early industry have manufactories. Okay, this one lets you get coal at manufactories instead of at, at so 50 years earlier. That's pretty cool. Uh, this one is artist level three. You get a, the Globe Theater in Calais. It would be in London, but it's in Calais because my capital's in Calais, so it's a capital province. Okay, so that's like Shakespeare. And then we have here some dockyards, some basically like some buildup. This one right here, if you have 20 army professionalism, you get some parliament issues. We're gonna have to see those ones. So let's drill for it, because I right now I have no army professionalism because I've been using mercs. And I also used the new slacking mechanic while I was fighting all those wars. So I guess now it's time to drill. Keep in mind that making a general still gives army professionalism. You just slack and just works different than it used to. I wonder if English and French would be like different, like they would form and morph like a new language in this kind of uh, world. Ooh, so now as we enter the Age of Reformation, we do get the uh, Angevin Empire and the Age of Reformation. Uncertain times ahead, we get religious chaos, tolerance of heretics, yearly papal influence, religious unity minus 25. The religion of every new emperor and heir has now a 50% to be heretic religion as long as the modifier is active. Lures consume a religious position towards the reformation which can affect future events. Seeing that we're the emperor of the HRE, like I said, it would have been cool if we were able to reach this reform and then go Anglican and then try to make an Anglican empire. However, seeing that we are still trying to do that, um, we want to take a position, we would like to take a position of uh, staying Catholic. As that's what the empire is, right? We're still... 0.18 every month is not that bad. We still have like a 5% that we're not going to get. 5% chat. 5% from core ideas. Let's go. It's almost here. Overall, I do have to say that the mission tree is quite nice. Uh, I like the Angevin mission tree. I'm excited to try the Great, Brit Great Britain mission tree. Uh, potentially in a multiplayer game. As when you play multiplayer, uh, you know, going for the PU on England, on France, day one is usually either banned and even if it's not banned, it's incredibly hard to do because the French player is not going to let you stack wipe him and do the things that we did to him uh, do, like we did to the AI. We were able to pass another reform uh, right after killing Savoy and now we're decking another war against Genoa. However, we're starting to run out of time on this video. I think we went over a lot of the things on the mission tree. Um, if you would like to see a part two or see me continue this campaign, please let me know. This is what we look like, 1537. Of course, if we could, uh, we are one, two, three, four reforms away from uh, from revoke the privileges, which we probably if, could get in the next like 70 years with a couple kings dying and uh you know have to go around enforcing religion a bit but if you would like me to continue this campaign um let me know down and below in the comments and uh, we'll do a part two uh where we can rein in on italy uh as well as uh conquer uh the holy roman empire through diplomacy overall i think this is a pretty nice mission tree um i'm pretty uh, happy with uh how they made it um and i also really like the ideas so yeah that's it that's the previews of the nations that we're going to be that have the most major changes in this upcoming dlc 
and patch. You can uh, pre-order the game. If you do pre-order the game, uh, you will get the sound pack. We were actually using some of the songs in this video. Um, and also, you uh, can watch other YouTubers' guides on other nations that are upcoming in this DLC and patch. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Paradox, for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.